I'd like to start by saying that I graduated from MNS uh, three years ago, and it's great to be back, and it feels like home. Now, as you heard from Saif and Malak and Salma, they were talking about 8 a.m. classes. I'd like to start with a small story about the first time I had an 8 a.m. class in university. Now imagine being in an 8 a.m. class and having the instructor ask you, what do you think is your biggest problem? Now mind you, this was my first psychology class that I ever went to. Now, I went in going, thinking into that class that they're going to dig so deep into my insecurities, you know, about psychology, about okay, there. And I thought about it for five minutes and I thought to myself, Houston, I have many problems. Now, after my self-deprecating inner dialogue, I thought, my biggest problem is my self-esteem. Now, this is the reason I'm here to talk to you today. I'm going to talk to you about the time I realized that, and I have pledged since then to talk about issues that are important and personal to me. Now, others might ask, why talk about this, and why now? Well. I'd like to say that I've seen it in my own personal life and as well as my academic life that so many people have problems with their self-esteem. They have issues with themselves. Now that in turn inspired me to do a talk about gender-based bullying. I hosted that, I organized it. And through that event I realized that bullying affects different people differently. Now, I thought of this title because you'll know why in a bit. So, through that event, I, again, I realized that it affects people differently. Now, let's go back a few years, and I'd like to, to talk, talk to you about my middle and high school years. Now, they were a very confusing and impactful period on my, of my life. I was this little short kid who always tried his best to stay on the sidelines, who always didn't want to bring attention to himself. Now, naturally, that put a bullseye on my back. I was bullied both verbally and relationally. Now, an example of verbal bullying would be that someone would say, like a sentence as you walked by, or someone uh, says to you in your face, uh, you're this or that. This is verbal, and it's very self-explanatory. Now, relationally is where it gets tricky. And an example of that would be, you know those times when you hear a rumor about yourself and you find out that one of your closest friends is saying things about you behind your back? Or those times when you thought your friends, you see a picture of your friends on Facebook and they went out to uh, say an outing or a birthday without you. Now, who would have thought that was bullying? And another concept that I realized recently that I'd like to introduce you to is uh, social isolation. Now, it's pretty self-explanatory. This has two meanings, okay? So the first being that you're literally isolated from everyone around you. Your, your friends, your family, everyone. Now, the second meaning is where it gets complicated, okay? So, you can be surrounded by so many people, so many, but still have this feeling of being alone. Now, another thing that I went through, yani in school I went through so many types of bullying, but one thing that affected me the most was the idea of gaslighting, okay? So gaslighting, as you can see here, basically says making someone question their reality. Now, I went through this with someone who I thought was my best friend at the time. I, was, I wanted to confront him about something he was doing to me, which was violating my trust. Now, I told him, I don't, this is not okay. I don't like what you're doing. Now, he quickly responded, 
What are you saying? I didn't do anything. Stop putting words in my mouth. Stop making this up. Now, this, his response made me think, hmm, maybe I'm overreacting. Uh, is it valid to feel this way? Are my feelings legitimate? Now, do you know, have you, probably all of you felt the same way. Did you feel like you're upset and you feel like you're overreacting? And you find people telling you, مش للدرجة, مش مستهلة, and then you keep feeling like, like you're doubting the situation. Am I allowed to be upset in this situation or not? Now, I later realized, after lots of thought, that the worst thing you can do is doubt how much something upset you, or how much something means to you, or how much something hurt you. If you feel like you're upset, then that is enough. Now, fast forward a couple of years, and I'm standing before you today, speaking to a crowd of people. This, this is something that little Khaled would have never thought about doing. What changed, you may ask? Well, remember that first class I told you about? I realized then and there that I needed to change. I realized that I had a problem. So a counselor told me that one of the things that she taught me in one of our therapy sessions was, was the idea of looking at your own problems as if they were someone else's. Now, what does this mean? It means like you objectively look at your own problem and treat it as if it's someone else's. And then you keep developing and finding a solution for said problem. And then you feel compassion towards that person who is in fact yourself. I started to embrace the fact that I was just human. That, and I stopped judging myself too harshly. And this is basically what self-compassion is, as you can see here. Now, you all believe that the past cannot be changed, right? Well, what you can change is how that very same past impacts you. Now, through objectively analyzing uh, my problems, I began to realize that I was not, in fact, overreacting. I was, my feelings were valid. Now, it's not surprising, as many studies show, as many psychological studies show, that Self-compassion leads to more happiness and optimism and to less anxiety and depression. I was so displeased with myself back then, both mentally and physically, that I fell into two very common cognitive traps, which are perfectionism and self-downing. Okay, so perfectionism, what that entails is, it has the valuable desire to do better to be better and generally keep to high standards. So far, so good, right? However, since even Olympic gold medalists fail to, fail to reach perfection most of the time, we must embrace the idea that perfection simply doesn't exist. Perfectionism is, is, is a very bad thing, and what that it does is it makes you feel like you're never enough. It makes you, feel, it makes you doubt yourself. But I'd like to say that no one is ever enough. No one is perfect. So give up the idea that you must be perfect and just keep to your high standards and focus on what you can control. Now, moving on to self-downing. Self-downing is basically having a distorted perception of your value. An example of that would be, you know those times when you fail an exam and you feel like, oh, I'm such a failure, I'm failing at life. Or those times when you gain this kilo or two kilos or five and you feel like, oh, I'm the fattest person in the world. I'll never lose those. This is what basically self-downing is. Now, I realized that being self-aware is the first step to reaching all of this. That very same class made me realize all of this. Now, I'd like to wish good luck to those who are about to embark on that journey of self-acceptance and uh, looking at your problems and, as if they were someone else. Says. And remember that the power to change comes from within. Thank you.